watch party. Share the Zoom. We want to get more people in here. Come on, come on in. Take the seat. Wherever you're sitting at is front row seat. We thank God for each and every one of you. Come on in, share this out. Those of you on Facebook, go ahead and share everything out. Time to hear a word from the Lord. We need Him. We need Him. We can't do much at all without Him. So it's time for us to glean what the Lord has to say so we can know that we see. We need more strength. We need more faith. We need a lot more than we had on yesterday. But there is something that's working around the corner. So, come on, let's get them in. Let's get them tagged in. Let's get them shared. Watch for it. Whatever it takes to get more people on board. Call them up. Your ace, your, your partner, your destiny. Let's get them online. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God for each and every one of you connected with us. We are so delighted, too. Uh, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on behalf of myself, Lady Trina, and our director, Tracy, and the Utah family. We thank you for connecting with us. We know that you could be doing a lot of things today, Amen. and we're so glad that you're multitasking with us. Amen. So one more time, if you can, send anyone the link to Zoom or text someone and let them know to jump on or even take this facebook and and can and share it out amen amen all right uh i know um last sunday we had talked about uh some things and it was the last series of uh what we actually went into go to um go to luke 22 and we're gonna read 31 to 34 luke 22, 31 to 34. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for everything you've done for yes, us. Sir. You gave us everything we need pertaining to life and godliness, and we thank you that every good and perfect gift came from you, oh God. We thank you that you gave us grace and mercy that we are able to stand, live, and have our being today. Yes, As we go forward today, oh God, we speak peace today into your to the life of your people. Yes, we speak healing today in the life of your people, yes, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You said whatever we ask in your son's name, it shall come to pass. And yes, we thank God. you, oh God, that finances shall increase in the life of your people today. Thank in the you, name of Jesus. Jesus. And we glorify you. glorify you. We ask that you forgive us for our sins and our transgressions, yes, oh God, God, the things that we've done knowingly and unknowingly. Yes, we ask that you even bless our enemies, oh God, and yes, those that God. despitefully use yes, us. And we glorify your name because you are great and worthy to be praised, O oh God. We can search high and search low and find no entity greater than you. And we thank you, O oh God, for what you're going to do tonight. Yes. And we glorify your name and we praise your name forevermore. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, I know last week we had talked about some things. And, and like I said before, we talked about the um, transformation. We ended the series and... Uh, last sunday was the end of it and it was the series called being converted and so we being converted is some things that we need to know about it first of all we knew in advance that it has nothing to do with being uh transformed from being a unbeliever to a believer mm -hmm. but we want to dive into this thing and find out more about uh being converted mm -hmm. luke twenty two thirty one to 34 and it reads and the law say simon simon be behold satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat now this verse is very important to know um you know at some point later on in the message we are going to address that very verse amen but let's continue on but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren and he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to that debt. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall crow not this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Uh, in other words, Jesus is telling Peter before the cock crows, 
you will deny me three times. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's also important to know about that. Uh, as I said before, we completed that, uh, our transformation series, but tonight is the in-depth version of it. So we're really not complete with it, but until we complete this day. And so, um, as we said before, converted, is not being converted from unbeliever to a believer. It's, uh, it's basically two things. Uh, the first thing is that our faith should remain in Christ. Our faith should remain in Christ is one of the part of uh, the meaning of being converted. As Jesus mentioned in here, if you go back to the 32nd verse, it says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Now, let's stop right there. Look at what Jesus is praying for. Jesus is not praying a general prayer of faith. He's praying a specific prayer. He's praying, he's praying specifically for Peter's faith. Now, uh, if you look at it, what's the difference of faith? If you look at the difference of your faith and my faith, mm -hmm. let's say you believe in, and I have doubt. Mm -hmm. If you believe things should happen for you because I have doubt, it's going to slow me down. And so what Jesus is trying to do is say that I want you to continuously believe in God. Mm -hmm. Because when we believe in God, it activates our faith. Because anytime we go to God, we must believe that he is, that he exists. And he said, when we believe that he exists, he is a rewarder unto them that diligently seek him. Yes. And so we got to go to him. We just can't say we have faith. We go to him. We've got to believe that he exists, that he can make whatever you asking for come uh -huh. to pass. Uh -huh. And that's very important to know that, that you've got to believe in the fact that he can do it. Yes. It's not your mother, not your father, not your, your dad. I mean, your, 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 your uncle, your aunt. None of them can do it the way God can do it. Now, he can use them in the, in the story of your life to bless you, but it's still God doing it. And he's using them as a, a connection or a conduit to to allow the blessing to flow to you. And so it's, it's, it falls back to you believe. Do you believe? And that's the, the operative thing that you must believe because it'll happen for you. And so if we doubt that he exists, then there's no way that we're going to be able to please God right. if we doubt that he exists. And so because we understand that he exists, we know he can work it out for us. Mm -hmm. And so there were two men two men that were blind and they went to Jesus and they asked him to heal him, heal them. And so the first thing he said, he said to them, do you think I'm able to do this? Mm -hmm. Because if they don't believe that he can do it, why even try to lay his hands on him? Correct. Why even try to go forward? Yeah. Because they don't have what is necessary to move forward. Correct. They will stop him in his tracks. And that's sometimes we do. We stop God in, in his track because we don't really believe we kind of dancing around, but we have a smidgen of doubt and any small amount of doubt is doubt. Mm -hmm. And so he said, do you believe I could do this? They say, yes, Lord. And yeah. then he laid hands on them. And then after he laid hands on them, he said, it's according to your faith. Mm -hmm. So be it unto you. So now that when you start looking at the faith, your faith and my faith, if I'm doubting, mm -hmm. I'm going to get according to what I'm doubting. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing at all. But yes. you're going to get. And if you have even just a grain as a, a, a mustard seed, yeah. then you shall be able to tell that mountain, be thou removed yes. and be cast into the sea. And you should get what, you, what you, your faith believes in. And so that's where Jesus is praying for him that your faith fails not. That you would never see a moment that you stop believing in God and your faith start failing. And that's where we, we've got to be able to find a way to consistently have our minds set on Christ to where we always believe yes. in what he can do. When we have our minds stayed on him, not only you get your faith answered, you get peace along with that. Yes. And he, he, he will give you that peace that would... Pass all understanding. 
And so we've got to understand that it takes takes not a smidgen amount of belief, but if you believe just as a small seed, I wish I had a mustard seed to show you how small it is. It is so small that 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 thing can retrieve big things. And that's what it's trying to tell you, that if you keep your faith on the belief of God, yes. God, who can do it all yes. and is never insufficient, never tired, can always help you in every area of your life. Yes. And so we, we, we have to understand that doubt can kill our faith and we get nothing. Here's what James says. He takes it a step further. Go to James 2 and 18. 2 and 18. He takes it a step further. James 2 and 18. It says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith yes. without works, and I'll show you my faith by my by works. My yes. So your actions, even though you say you have faith, your actions has to line up according to the faith that you have. You can't just say, I have faith Come without doing anything. Yes. So when those two line up, it's, it's showing God that you do believe what you are asking him for. You can't just say, I'm going to ask him and I really don't believe and then I'm, I'm wishy-washy. Mm -hmm. You've got to be steadfast, unmovable, yes. always yes. abounding in the work of God. Yes. And to know that your labor is not in vain because you have firm belief that God can do it. Yes. And so when we understand that we are doing things to reflect the faith that we have inside of us, mm -hmm. then we retrieve everything and we'd never see our faith fail. And so later on in the chapter, James has said, faith without works is dead. dead. Yeah. So you have the faith, mm -hmm. but you're doing nothing. That means you must have dead faith. And then if you haven't dead faith, I know you're not retrieving anything from oh, God. Oh. So you've got to understand that your faith can't waver to doubt. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes to keep yourself thinking and believing consistently. First thing, thing you have to be able to stay in this word. Yes. If you're doing things on your own thinking you're going to maintain doubt, just look at the things around you that's happening. That's enough to make anybody lose doubt, uh, lose faith, should I say. Anybody can can have doubt creep in when you're looking at a pandemic yes. and it still exists and people are trying to get back to normalcy, which it's not the case right now. Until we get a vaccine, until this thing completely gone, until we no longer have any cases, this is when some people can lose their faith. Yeah. So, so faith, you got to have that faith. So Jesus is praying that Peter believe, keep on believing to God, on God, that he would never lose or never see his faith fail. Mm -hmm. And that's very important, that we never want our faith to fail in this season. And so the second thing uh, being converted means is that we never deny knowing Jesus before others. Let me say that again. We never deny knowing Jesus before others. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father, which is in heaven. But what does that really mean when it comes down that he said he's going to deny us before his Father? Well, go to Matthew 7, and we're going to read 21 to 23. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. I know sometimes you're doing something and you miss it, and then, then we jump right into it. So, 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have, we, have we not prophesied in thy name? Mm -hmm. And in thy name have cast out devils, mm -hmm. and in thy name done many 
wonderful works. Uh -huh. And then will I profess unto them. Now, this is Jesus saying this to them who's saying those things. I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Jesus. So he is simply laying out there that all that stuff you're saying you're doing in his name, you have faith in his name, and you're doing other stuff, and you're denying him before other people. He's saying, look, this is how it's going to go down. When you die and you come to me, I'm going to say, depart from me, work of iniquity. I never told God, I never told my father anything about you because all you've been doing is working evil stuff. You've been doing evil stuff. Iniquity is inward sin. So all you've been doing is that. That's all you cared about, how you feel, what you wanted to do. That's all that mattered to you. And so here Peter went through the fact that he denied Jesus before people. Now, I don't know about you. Have you ever been in a situation where everyone around you doesn't love God, doesn't claim to know God, doesn't even claim to be around God, doesn't, doesn't even claim to be a Christian? And so you're the only one in the midst of all of that. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine that Peter was feeling isolated and fear with all of that because here it is, is that if he says something, mm -hmm. He's not knowing what they're going to do to him if he do say something. And sometimes we end up miss the people, and then we know that they ain't for God because they're saying the dirty jokes, they curse cursing left and right, and they have no idea who God is because they wouldn't have the, the, the conversation that they're having. And then we say nothing. So we deny God because we refuse to say something before them because in fear of what they might do, what they might say, or in retaliation because we are Christian and we got to hear it all day long if we on a job, or we have to hear it in our family, or we have to hear it with our friends who care nothing about God, but we said nothing. Do you know that the very thing you say could change someone's mind, yes. change someone's heart? Yes. We are never supposed to fear what people can do to us. Mm -hmm. let, me show you, let me show you this. From a, because people can say some things, do some things, but go to Matthew 10 and 28. I'm going to read this in a different version. Matthew 10 and 28. We're never supposed to feel what men can do to us. I mean, at all. Matthew 10 and 28. It says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, because they cannot kill the soul. But be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Yes. So you don't need to fear man, regardless if, if by chance, and I, God forbid, that any of us get killed by, by men, in the sense that they kill us, but they can't kill our soul. Come on now. But God has the ability to kill the soul and the body, and he can do that in hell. So we get up to heaven and we get cast out. You ain't going to a, a lower division of heaven. You getting cast out and going to hell. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, this is the time that we, I said this before a long time ago, that we need to talk about, you know, sin and all that stuff now before we die, because after we die, it comes the judgment, and it's too late. So if you don't want to talk to me about it, then, okay, let's go ahead and let you handle it your way and find out how things really going to unfold. But I'd rather you talk with me about it so we can kind of work this thing out and, and find out that there's a better way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And so you can't be afraid of letting people know that you stand for God. For God, you live, and for God, you die. Yes. You cannot. Let them stop you from declaring that because it's important for you to say that. It's important for you to know the fact that you stand for. See, being converted is not about trying to convert people to come to Christ. Mm -hmm. It's about showing you that you love Christ so much that you're willing to stand against all adversity, obstacles, situations that goes on in your life. Yes. It's about proving you to you that you love God and you're not afraid of telling people that you love you got to give the hope that lies within you. Yes. And if you have that hope that God is doing great things in your life, 
then you got to be able to say it and let them know and shout it regardless if they don't like it. Here there was a man that wanted God to heal him. And he said, oh, son of David, have mercy on him. And them people trying to quiet him down. The more they try to keep him quiet, the more he got loud. Oh, yes. son of David, have mercy on me. Oh, son of David, have mercy on me because he needed healing. If you need something from God, whatever it is that's personal to you, how dare you let someone stop you from saying what you need from God? How dare you let them quiet you down because it's you who need it. They don't need it. They don't care about it. They don't even know what you need, but you need it bad. And you're going to stop and suffocate your praise to God because of someone else? Man, these jokers don't have a clue what God can do sometimes. And you're quiet with them. You've got to be able to open up your mouth and tell them, thus says the Lord, yes. for your life. This ain't got nothing to do with them. Yes. You don't have to worry about it. If they convert or not, it's about what you feel about God. Yes, God. And when your level of feelings for God increase, then you can't keep quiet mm. because you got mm. a testimony that even the angels can't yes. even give. Mm. So yeah. when you have that testimony, how can you shut your mouth? You can't, especially in this season, all of you have not gotten sick. Most of you have not gotten sick. And if you did, you still alive. That's something to shout right there, you, that you Lord. made it through. Yes. All the stuff yes. that the enemy tried to do to you. Man, you got to be able to shout or say something yes. or get in front of somebody yes. and tell that testimony Jesus. or something. Jesus. We overcome by the words of our testimony. Yes. It's not you trying to help them to overcome. It's you overcoming because when the next thing come around, you start to think about how he got me out of the last thing and the next thing, I know he can do it. And that's when that's confirmed in you, man, you get dogmatic. You, okay, you won't get in front of me? And you won't know about my God, my God shall supply all of my needs. Oh. Not a little bit, all of my all needs. Of Whatever need I got, it shall be met by God. Yes, God. He may use you to bless me, but it's still God I give the glory for it because he didn't have to use you. Come on, he could use someone else. Come on, he can do it another way. But God said he's going to use men to give unto my bosom. Yes. He's going to use men to bless me. And anytime someone bless me in any kind of way, I don't care, small, I don't despise small blessings. Amen. And when they give it to me, I am so grateful because they didn't have, God didn't have to lay it on your heart to do it. Yes, and when he does, man, I'm grateful for that. And so we can't keep ourselves. Let me give you a few way, other ways that we, we deny God before men. It's with our conversation. We know that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And so... Because we know that, we say things and we do things contrary to what God says in his word. And so we know that what it says, but we still do it our way. And that's another way we deny God before men is with our conversation. Mm -hmm. Next, we deny God with our mind and our actions. The things that we think about and the things that we do because of we, our thoughts, the things that we think about, we put actions to it, whatever we meditated, um, the Bible tells us that there are people who, who lie in their bed thinking about yeah. things to do because it's like power to them. Yeah. And so they think about evil things evil to do to us. Yeah. And so you're thinking about this, and now you're putting actions to it. Because if you thought about it, you figure you got the plan right. You're going to go out and set forward and put it in motion. Sure. And so the things that we think about contrary to God, we start putting action to it because we thought about this. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get this. I'm, I'm married, but, yeah, I'm going to get this woman. Uh, and nobody going to know about it. I got to wait and make sure it's hidden. I'm going to make sure that we get together at this motel and it's hidden away from everybody. But somebody always see. If nobody else see, yes. God sees. So they don't think like that. And so we start doing actions thinking that what we got in our mind that's contrary to God is going to work out for our good. And it's not. It, 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 some people think that things that they do, just because they had not suffered anything, nothing happened to them that, um, well, since I ain't go through, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. But they're not realizing this is the time of grace. God has a perfect will. And he has a permissive will. So we're gonna, at some point, we're going to talk about perfect and permissive. 
The things that God wants for us, yeah, it's his perfect will. But then it's permissive where he allow us to live this life because of grace. And the things that we do and the actions that it's your choice, free will, he's given unto you. But you got to understand to know to do good and you don't do it to him that is sin. And at some point, grace is going to run out. And then you're going to be left with holding a bag of all that junk that you've been doing. And all the stuff you've been doing contrary to the will of God. So you've got to understand that it's on you. But when, when thou become converted, it keeps us from denying God in our actions mm -hmm. and in our words. Mm -hmm. See, the devil wants us to deny God the same way he was trying to get Job to deny God. Mm -hmm. When he told Job, he said he wanted him to curse God and die. Yeah. Even his wife was trying to get him to do it as he suffered through many things. He lost his, his children. He lost his livestock and stuff like that. So he lost his money and everything. And all that stuff, he was still trying to get Job to curse God and die, deny him. And so he said, the Lord take it, the Lord give it, and the Lord take it away. And so he also said that, uh, for God I live, for God I die. So he made that declaration. He said, the Bible said that he was upright and he eschewed evil, which means that he, he didn't live to do wrong things. He lived to be righteous before God. And so what we need to do to be righteous, live, learn how to live righteous before God. Mm -hmm. and, and doing that, the devil do not want you to do that, live for God in his way, because he got kicked out. So he no longer is a part of the whole organization because he wanted to exalt his kingdom over God. Mm -hmm. But we have an opportunity when we do wrong that we can ask God for forgiveness and he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. And so mm -hmm. here we, he's trying to get us through a lot of stuff, make us go through a lot of stuff to make us change. Go to, go back to Luke 22. And remember that scripture I said is important to know it's verse 31. Luke 22 and 31. And it reads, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desire to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Now, sifting is the process of separating the chaff of the wheat from the wheat. The chaff is something that is, is not uh, fit for consumption for humans. We can digest the chaff, mm -hmm. but we can digest the wheat. And so the devil wants us to focus on the things that we, that is no good for us and keep our mind off what's helpful for us, which we know like what's helpful is the goodness of the Lord is helpful for us. But he wants us to focus on the things that, that is hard for us to deal with, hard for us to digest in a sense, that we take that in and focus on that. And, and to a point that we can't overcome it and we become separate from God. Now, let me give you what I call a chaff list, which we know that, as I said, the chaff is something that we are not able to handle or digest. But let me give you a chaff, chaff list that he wants us to focus on. The first one, if you're writing this down, is pride. The second one is jealousy. The third one is frustration. I'm, I'm going to go back over it. <laughs> and the fourth one is hate. The fifth one is lust. The sixth is anger. And the seventh is greed. 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 G-R-E-E-D. I'm going to go over that list again. First one is pride. Next is jealousy. Next frustration, next hate, next lust, next anger, next greed. Now there's more to this list, but we're just going to narrow it down to seven for right now. And so all of these things that we have listed down as a part of this chaff, chaff list that I call, it's, it deals and it impacts your emotion and your attitude. 
everything that this has something to do with your emotions and your attitude. And when that impacts those two portions of us, we can lose ourselves and not focus on God because it's impacting our feelings. The more that we are engulfed in pride or jealousy or frustration mm -hmm. can impact and make you think less of God and more about what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And the more that the, 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 the less that you think of God, what happens is you no longer uh, focus on the things that he has for you. You're not focused on the way that he will get you out of situation. You are focused on retaliation. Mm -hmm. You focus on separation from the people and, and calling them all kind of names. And you or are you trying to get with someone and you want them bad and they don't want you because they married. And so you feel with lust and you're trying to do what you can to get them to persuade them to come your way. Mm -hmm. And so all of this stuff happens to where we get so engulfed with this that we're not thinking on the things of God. And so it keeps us, at some point, it can keep us all bound up. And so the devil used this tactic before. He used it in the Bible. The Bible says early in chapter, in Luke 22, he said about the third chapter, I mean, third verse, it said that Satan entered in Judas. Mm -hmm. it, it said that. And then it gives his full name, his surname, Iscariot. So you know who it, it came in. It, it entered into him, mm -hmm. who was part of the 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that a person that's in church who's around Christ can be around Christ. Satan still can enter into them. Amen. And so we understand that just because they in church, that don't mean church is in them. Amen. We are the church. Yes. So that don't mean that they have everything they need to, to operate as the church. And so Satan can enter in. Now, how do he enter in? And one of those things that we mentioned. Yes. But he entered into Judas by greed. So Judas sold out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. That's how the devil entered into him, was able to get him and, and be able to sift him as weak. Right. And so his focus wasn't on the things of Christ. His focus was on getting money. Because of the greed. And Satan entered into him. So what way Satan can enter into you? Is it by greed? Is it by lust? Is it by anger or jealousy, frustration? How can he get to you? If one of these things are in you, then that's his avenue. That is his way to slide on in into you and cause you to be frustrated, cause you to want to retaliate against people, cause you wanted to withdraw or do whatever. These things, and there's more to it, that he can get in. He can enter into you. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is take Judah's name out and insert your name. Wow. Satan has inserted blah, blah, blah. And if these are one of, this chaff, chaff list is one of the ways he can enter into you, then he is coming. Wow. He's coming. Jesus said this, the enemy coming, but he has nothing in me. He has nothing that's going to impact me, change me, change my destination, not even a little bit. It's all set in stone, and it's going to work out the same way it's set. But he can come in and stop you from moving forward because of one of these things that's already, it's a seed for him to jump into your life. Wow. Can you pull up that weed and get rid of that chaff and overcome these things that can overtake us? If we can overcome that, then that gives us an opportunity to defeat the enemy and he can sift us, shake us apart so easily because of the things that's in us that he can just slide on in. And that's what we need to work on. And when we become converted, it gives us the ability to overcome those things quickly. Mm -hmm. We can, we learn from that. We understand that we have the power to overcome these things. And that's what he's trying to do. Make sure that you look at this and that you can't be that overcomer. See, what, what, what helped Peter to become converted was this. Jesus asked them three times, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. You know all things. I love you on the last time. And it tells us that love is the answer. It's the key. It's the thing that gets us to the point when we love God enough, 
develop that love. This is something that we've got to develop. God knows how much he loves you. Now it's up to you to find out how much he loves you. And that's something that we all don't have that understanding that Jesus loves us so much. The way that we know that he said he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he sacrificed them for you. Regardless of what you went through, regardless of what you are now, he sacrificed for you to change. Yes. And you can get that change through love. People do not know how to love people like Christ loved. I mean, the way Christ loved you is not the person you are in action, but it's the person you are that he created. And so he's always looking at you as the creation that he had put forth, not the acts that you're doing. Some people, he don't love the acts, but he loved the person. He loves you so much. With a, it said, with an everlasting love, everlasting. It doesn't run out. It doesn't run out. It's that agape love. He loves you by will. It's not about your actions, your feelings, his feelings, anything. All of that aside is because he created you in his likeness and in his image. And so that love is great, like Tony the Tiger said. But you got to understand what that's like. People do not know what that is like to have the love of God mm -hmm. that just shed abroad in their life, that they understand this thing can get me through. Regardless if she's with me or you with me or not with me or you talking about me, it doesn't matter. As long as I got God plus me is the majority yes. to me. And so when I understand that I am the majority with God, it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you say about me. Correct. I have to be confident. And love allow you to be converted and confident to where you never deny who Christ is. And you always keep the faith in God. And when that happens... Then he said, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren, meaning that don't hesitate to tell them how you were able to love God. He said, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing they ever done. You tell them that and show them what that means to you, and that would trickle down to everyone else. Falling in love with Jesus would be the best thing that we all could ever do. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you for opening our eyes and our minds that we heard your word. And we thank you, O oh God, that you are allowing that to rest upon our heart, that we may not sin against thee. We thank you for every person that's within the sound of my voice. I thank you that they feel the strength, the love to stay still and see the salvation of you, O oh God. And we glorify you for what you're going to do in their life. And we praise your name forevermore. Amen. 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 Now, if anyone has any questions, this is the time that you can ask a question. I know that um, this thing, uh, I try to keep it as simple as possible, but if it was something that was a little bit, ooh, a little bit over, give me the opportunity to explain to you so we can make sure that you leave away with understanding. Like we said before, in all by getting, getting, get understanding. understanding. And this is the reason why we try to uh, open this up to everyone. Now the people on Facebook. All right, so Facebook people, we are not able to see, but. I can do that then. Okay, mm -hmm. and we'll try to see your question if you have it there, and then answer your question. And if we are not able to get to it, we definitely will see it and answer it at a later date for you. Make sure that you understand what's, what's going on. Because it's important in the season, you can't, um, not know what to do when certain situations come up Amen. and so you want to have this thing when 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 military soldiers uh go to war they don't practice what they need to do right. when war happens they right. they get ready before war in yeah. peacetime yeah. and so now this might be peace or this might be war to you or whatever you still need to know what to do and so that was part of one of the actual uh, series, being content that you know what to do when issues come and you know what to do when success, because we all have problems in those areas. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, if success comes fast and you're not prepared, then you can sabotage that. 
And so you want to know what to do so you're not panicky in all situations. So are we able to get? Yeah. Okay, so we're just looking to see. Now, if we're not able to do it, let me see if anyone here. Like I said, if you want to chat, you can always go down and actually um, take a look. All right, so she is looking at that. Let me take a look on my end and see if I see anything. I don't anything. see any questions. All right, no questions. All right, so no questions this way, no questions down here. If you want to chat, you know how to chat. You can click on uh, more, and it will show you uh, the chat option, and then it will give you the ability to go. Okay, so you have it. All right. It will give you the ability to go in and, and, and actually type up a question to us. All right. So with that being said, no one has said anything and we will move on. So there's someone that heard this message and they pretty much know that the spirit was tugging on their heart and they want to be saved today. Yes. Well, this is the time to do it. Don't wait for tomorrow because tomorrow's not promised. So I need you to repeat after me. Lord, forgive me. For all my sins, renew my mind, my heart, and my spirit. Let me always hear your voice over everything in my life. And I thank you, oh God, for lifting me up. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, we ask that you get into a Bible based church. We know that many churches had reopened. And so it's your opportunity to, re to visit them. And so if you find that they are not um, transforming your spirit, you need to find a church that will do it. And if you can't, we welcome you to come here. Uh, we will welcome you with open arms. We know that you have some ideas and things that will help us transform this church uh, that we hadn't thought about. So we thank you in advance. If you want to be a part of this church, you can call us at 504-579-4226 or 504-201-3368, or you can email us at utom at gmail.com. Uh, when you do that, we'll send you some information, what we believe in, and we all know we believe in who? Uh -huh. uh, she got it now, but <laughs> we believe in God, and every, everything else is secondary. Mm -hmm. And so we thank you in advance. Uh, once you send us that, we know that you're going to make this ministry a little bit better than we were yes, on yesterday. Yes. So thank God in advance for you. Um, with that being said, it is time to give. Mm -hmm. It's time to give. Uh, we know that many of you have blessed us in the past and we're asking that you help us again, especially with our venture with the missions. Um, we have on our Facebook page, if you go on the services, it's a special write-up about the mission. We ask that if you give anything towards mission uh, or give anything towards uh, general, we ask that you split it with missions. We know in this time and in the season that everyone is kind of a little tight for funds. So we ask that whatever you give for general funds, just split it up between general and mission. And so that would allow us to continue on helping folks. Amen. This, yeah. this is an opportunity that we were able to get into to help uh, people at the certain medical facility uh, that need access to it and need some things, a little basic thing as a meal, you know, or getting gas just to get back and forth, transportation, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we can't, you know, divulge the name, uh, who we're working with because of confidentiality, but please help us out. And we thank you in advance for doing that. Now, the way you give, you can go to our Facebook page. And once you go to the Facebook page, you're going to see the cover um, that says uh, Uto Ministries. Underneath that, you're going to see Use App. If you click on that, it's going to kick you out to a secure website. That way you can donate or you can set up the profile to continuously donate. It will be all set up with your information. And it's all secure, so don't worry about it. It's secure. And so if you uh, want to download the Give Plus app, G-I-V-E Plus app, um, it would allow you to utilize the same function as the website, but on your phone. And once you give that way, we'll give that. And we thank you in advance nice. for giving. We know God is going to bless you some 30, some 60 and 100 fold yes. in this same season Amen. because you gave unto us. Amen. Amen. Thank you in advance. Amen. And so now with that being said, um, the only announcement that we have, please join us Sunday. We have access to 
uh, we have Sunday service, and we want you to come and hang with us and hear what the word has to say to the church. And so that's for 930. Uh, we start and we get into it and we don't drag along. We hit it and get off. <laughs> I don't want to cook past the gas, which means I don't want to cook past past the anointing of God. And so whatever he tells me and whatever he tell, when he tells me to stop, that's it. I'm not trying to drag anything on for time's sake or whatever. It's not like that. So we want to give you, thus says the Lord, according to the way God wants us to present it. Amen. Amen. So uh, the other announcement, if you need prayer, you can give us a call at those numbers, but I'll give it to you again, just in case you was multitasking. It's 504-579-4226, 504-579-4226, or 504-201-3368. I'll give you that number again, 504 504- 2013368 or you can email us at utom at gmail.com and we definitely will pray for you and pray for whomever that you want us to pray and we look for results amen, amen. and so uh with that being said all mine are clear his perfect love is on us even though we are not perfect you have a blessed wonderful week and we know god is going to do great things for you amen amen goodbye